Burt Lancaster is recognized as one of the greatest leading men of all time. He had a magnificent physique, piercing blue eyes, and a distinctive grin that could convey both charm and menace, depending on the character. As a young girl in Smithton, Pennsylvania, I developed an enormous crush on him after seeing his very first film, Ernest Hemingway's The Killers. In fact, my bedroom walls were covered in photos of Burt Lancaster. Nobody could have told me then that one day I'd be acting with him in a film which would win each of us an Academy Award. Wow! Both critics and audiences were impressed with Burt's screen debut in The Killers, and he quickly chalked up a run of box office hits specializing in tough guy roles, such as the hardened prison inmate planning a breakout in brute force, a Native American athlete fighting racial prejudice in Jim Thorpe All-American, and a hard-as-nails army sergeant having an affair with his commanding officer's wife in From Here to Eternity. Like most major leading men of the period, Burt made a number of westerns and costume epics, like Ten Tall Men and The Flame and the Arrow, which allowed him to utilize the great athletic abilities he built as a young man in New York City working as an acrobat. But as popular as these pictures were, Burt was anxious to prove there was more to him than just a handsome face with a muscular body. He wanted to be taken seriously as a dramatic actor, so, in order to gain more control of his career, Burt made what was considered during Hollywood studio era a daring move. He formed his own production company, which quickly became the most successful and innovative star-driven independent company of the 1950s. During this time as an actor-producer, Burt carefully balanced his career with action-based crowd-pleasing roles such as His Majesty O'Keefe and Apache with dramatic character parts, such as the alcoholic doctor in Come Back Little Sheba and the vicious newspaper columnist in Sweet Smell of Success. That's the only reason the poor slobs pay you, to see their names in my column all over the world. Now I make it out you're doing me a favor? I didn't say The that. day I can't get along without a press agent's handouts, I'll close up shop and move to Alaska lock, stock and barrel. Bert also had a long and successful screen partnership with Kirk Douglas with the two teaming up for a total of seven films over a 40-year period. Two of their best are the Western gunfight at the O.K. Corral, with Burt as the iconic gunslinger turned lawman Wyatt Earp, and Kirk as Doc Holliday. And the gripping political thriller Seven Days in May, with Burt as an army general plotting a military coup, and Kirk as a staff member out to stop him. I could walk out of here tonight and offer myself as candidate for the office of presidency. And by tomorrow morning, I'd be sitting at that desk with precisely the mandate you hold so dear. And what's more, Mr. President, you know it, and I know it, and this country knows it. In 1960, Burt decided to co-produce and star in a film version of Sinclair Lewis's novel, Elmer Gantry, about an enigmatic con man who teams up with an evangelist to sell religion to gullible small towners. I don't know the first thing about theosophy, philosophy, psychology, ideology, or any other ology, but I know this. With Christ, you're saved. And without him, you're lost. Yeah. And how do I know there's a merciful God? Because I've seen the devil plenty of times. One day, my phone rang, and a voice said, This is Burt Lancaster, and I want you to play the prostitute Lulu Baines in Elmer Gantry. He said he'd seen me in a television drama I'd done where I played an alcoholic, and he never forgot it. At first, I thought the call was a prank, but it really was Bert. Well, I jumped at the chance to play Lulu, not only because I was anxious to prove I could do more than play singing ingenues, but also to work with my teen idol. There was one obstacle to overcome, however. The director and co-producer, Richard Brooks, wanted no part of me. Most casting scenarios would have had me out in a flash with the likes of Richard Brooks voting no but not with Burt Lancaster calling the shots. Burt went to the mat for me and stayed there till the first day's rushes. And that momentous call I got from Richard Brooks that night, saying he was wrong, and from where he sat, I would win the Academy Award. <laughs> How about that? Burt was a joy to work with, the consummate professional, with only one word of advice for me. Though I did not work every day, 
Bird suggests that I come in every day just to follow the storyline and watch the other actors at work. And was he ever right? Elmer Gantry and Bert's faith in me changed my life. The night we both won Oscars for Elmer Gantry was the proudest moment of my career. Following his triumph as Elmer Gantry, Bert continued to flex his acting muscles with such diverse roles as a Nazi war criminal standing trial in Judgment at Nuremberg. Where were we when every village in Germany has a railroad terminal where cattle cars were filled with children being carried off to their extermination? A convicted murderer who becomes an expert on birds in Birdman of Alcatraz, and a railroad manager trying to stop a German commander from stealing French art treasures in the train. Because of his enormous talents as both actor and producer in a career spanning over 40 years, Burt Lancaster achieved the respect and admiration of his fans, colleagues, and the industry where he worked so hard. And I saw it firsthand, how his legacy as a superstar matched the man himself, honest, straightforward, and genuine to the core. And by the way, hands down, he was the best kisser of them all. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Shirley Jones. See The Killers, Thursday at 9.15 p.m., part of TCM Summer Under the Star Salute to Ava Gardner.